Speaking about functions, uh, it's important to talk about the variables and their scope, where these variable is visible or, and where these variable can be changed. So let me give an, an example. Okay, let's, uh, let us define a function f1, uh, doesn't have any arguments, right? Uh, and we introduce a variable l inside this function and this function print l and g, right? By the way, if I run it as it is, uh, well, uh, it won't give me any trouble, although g is not defined, but I didn't call my function. It's important that this variable g is uh, defined before the function is called. So, for example, uh, if I now call my function uh, and I say f1 and try calling it, it will give me an error because name g is not defined. So let me define a variable g right here, and I say g equals 2. Um, and if I run it now, it won't give me any errors. It will run, and l would be equal, uh, it will print uh, l, which is equal to 1, and g, which is equal, equal to 2. So the variable l here, it's called the local variable, right? and the variable g here, it's a global variable. So uh, th what it means is that uh, this variable is seen only within the function, but this variable is seen everywhere inside your script. So the function knows about g, but here these, uh, this uh, piece of code beyond the function doesn't know anything about l. So let me give you another example. Let us call, uh, so comment this out. Uh, let me introduce another function, f2, also no arguments. I introduce l here, which is a local variable, and print just my l, right? Uh, so now I will introduce l here and say l equals to 2, right? This l here, is a different L than this L. They have the same name, but these are different objects. So this is a global variable, and this is a local variable inside the function. Yeah, they happen to have the same name, but they're different. And I have to say, well, um, if it's possible, try avoiding using the same name for different variables so that you don't get in trouble with, with, with confusing them. So uh, if I call F2 now, uh, if I run it, um, it will print me L, which is equal to 1, because here L is local and it's assigned the value of 1. So what's uh, interesting, if I print, in addition to that, I print L here, it will print 1 from this line and it will print 2 from this line, because here it doesn't know anything about this local L, it prints the value of the global variable L. All right, let's, let's see what else we can do with local and global variables. Um, so let me introduce a function f3, which will be printing me a global variable, right? Uh, so print g, and uh, if I want to execute it, right, I say g equals 1 f3, uh, run it. Well, it, you know, this function knows what g is and it prints it for me. So now if I introduce another function, which say define uh, for, and uh, here I take the same, um, you know, I have access to these global variable and I say, well, change these global variable, make it uh, one uh, plus one, right? Um, so and then I try, I want to print it. So if I call F4 now, right, I can comment out this line. Uh, it's going to give me an error because local variable G referenced before assignment. So it cannot, within the F, uh, within the function F4, it thinks that g must be, well, a local variable if you want to change it. So you can access the value of your global variable, but you cannot change your, the value of your uh, global variable within your function. 
Well, you actually can, but you need uh, you need a special keyword for that. And here is how it works. Uh, so I introduced def uh, five, uh, then yet another function with such impressive functionality. Oops. So where I say global G, so now the function knows that I, um, I want to have access to my G, and then I can I want to change it, and then after that I want to print it, and if after that I say F5, uh, that should work. So here I let this function access the global variable and change its value. Well. Uh, that's a way to do it. However, I would discourage you from doing that. I would rather give this variable um, as an input to your function, as an argument to your function, than uh, than change, what, than introducing it as global um, and changing it after that. So, speaking of that, it's actually important to see what functions do with variables and uh, before going into that I have to I have to say that there could be different types of objects in Python some of them are mutable and some are immutable and this is this is quite complex uh, but in order to understand why in some cases function change our variables uh, and in other cases they don't um, well we need we need to talk about it so uh, we talked about integer and float numbers before in complex numbers. Uh, so they are immutable objects. They can be changed. Let me give you an example. A equals to eight, B equals A. Uh, then I say print, uh, sorry, print A. Uh, then I say print B, right? And then I change A to B. 3.14 and then I say print a uh, print b all right if I run this code now well here uh, a equals 8 b equals 8 right then I change a I print a a is now has a different value but b has the same value it didn't change to understand that phenomenon uh, I will show you the following uh, picture. So, if you have uh, if you have an integer number, right? We initially had our numbers, uh, our two variables a and b, both uh, both uh, referring to the same integer number, they uh, which is uh, uh, which is immutable, which cannot be changed, right? Then what's happening when we change uh, a, we're not changing this number. We can't change it. We're just the, the variable a starts to refer to another object, to another uh, to another uh, immutable uh, number, 3.14. The um, the variable b is still referring to the same eight. That's why it's not uh, changing. So let me go back to the code and uh, give you give you another example of an immutable uh, type of objects, right? Um, so an immutable object would be a string, for example. So if I do H, uh, introduce a string, say that the string will be hello, and print this string, or print the string zero element, right? Um, so I can access the zero element of my string, the letter H, right? But if I try to say H str uh, zero element, uh, make it instead of capital H, make it a small h. If I try running the script, I'll get an error because while the string, it says string object does not support item assignment because it's it's immutable. I cannot change its value once I set it. Well, however, there are mutable objects in Python. So I have, let me say, I have the same string, 
And now I want to create a list from this string. This is actually can be conveniently done with, uh, with a function list, right? I, I call list of my string. And uh, let me print the entire list first. Print each list. Uh, run that. So it uh, splits my string into um, into five separate elements of a list. It gives me a list with these elements. Each uh, each letter is a separate uh, is a separate element. And now, if I want, I can say each list. Uh, zero and change it to whatever I want. If I want to change it to small h, I can easily do it. So let me up to that print the list again. So initially, um, initially it was hello with a capital H. Now it became hello with a small h. So this is a mutable object. And let me, uh, let me give you another example right so for example if uh let me take a list okay let me comment this out i'm introducing a new list q1 equals uh one two and three then q2 equals q1 right if i print my list Q1 and then print my list Q2. I will get the same the same things, right? Now let me change. Well, lists are mutable. Let me change the the zero element of my list in Q1. So Q1 uh, uh, zero or well, let's say Q1. It's uh, the position two. Let's make it something different. Let's make it oops. And I again gonna print Q1 and Q2. Okay, I'm running the script again. So what's happening here is very different compared to what was happening to the numbers. So here, if I change my uh, list Q1, just one element in these lists, uh, well, it's not only Q1 which is changing, but also Q2 is changing as well. The thing is, and I'm Getting back to the slides now, um, the thing is that uh, the both lists Q1 and Q2, uh, the variables Q1 and Q2 were referring to the same lists of integer variables, right? Uh, so now what's happening, uh, it's actually this element, this element is referring to something different. I'm not changing these, uh, these elements, but I make it refer to something different. Uh, and since both Q1 and Q2 refer to the same thing, well, they uh, both uh, are altered. So that's, um, uh, that's um, once again, so Q1 and Q2, they refer to the same list. Uh, it is stored in the same memory location lists are mutable so uh we're changing we're changing this this value right and q2 is still pointing to the same location so it changes along with uh the q1 so this uh makes a big difference when we call functions and give the variables um to the functions as mutable or uh, immutable objects. So let me demonstrate to you how it's happening. Okay, let me comment this out. And let me introduce a new function. Well, let's say function f6. Uh, okay. Uh, which takes one variable a and let this variable uh, just, you know, we'll, we'll print this variable. Okay, we're given uh, a, and then I change the variable, right? A equals seven, right? And then I print, uh, this is 
changed. A equals A. And let me call these functions. So I introduce variable A, which is global, and I'll do the print for these variable. Print uh, global A equals A. Then I call my function f6 of a, and then I will print this variable again. So keep in mind that this call of the function will print the values of a uh, inside the function. So um, calling that, uh, getting what the, the value of a, this is a global variable a, right? Um, then uh, it prints it here because we give it to to the function here here while a is changed we're changing it within um, within the function right um, and uh, uh, while well, we're printing the value of seven and then after the function exits uh, well, it forgets about these a. It forgets about these a equals seven. These uh, these local a, and prints me three again. So let's see what's gonna. Well, I can again. Let me show a slide with an illustration of that. And uh, this is this is what we have. Uh, we have the essentially the two different variables, global a and local a both pointing to three initially and then after uh, after reassigning while well, the local points to seven uh, and the global still remains pointing to three integers are immutable objects so they're you know they're they're not changing let's see what's going to happen in the case of mutable objects so let me comment this out and uh, introduce a function uh, F7. Okay, this is, um, you know, actually I can copy that and just make a few changes. Uh, so, okay. So let me call it F7. Uh, let me call it B for the sake of change. All right, so B, B, B. So in here, B, I will use B, which is a list, and I'll append to this list another element, uh, which will be equal to seven. Oops. So I'll change it here, right? Um, okay, B, B. It would be probably faster to type it, type it from scratch. B equals a list one, two, and three, and I call F seven of B. Okay, let's see what we're gonna have. All right. So initially, here it prints me my global B, my one, two, three, which I defined here. Then it calls the function, which gets my global B. Um, as an input, right, and it prints it as it is, right, then I append to my B, I append one more element, and this is what a, cha what a changed B is, it's, it's printed here. Well, the difference with the previous example is that uh, when we print, when we exit the function and print our global B, it appeared to be changed, uh, unlike the integer number. So let me go back to the slides for a second and show you how that works. So list is a mutable object. So since it's a mutable object, we have well local um, local B and global uh, well I call them the same, but uh, pointing to the same um, to the same uh, lists. And then even if I change this list, which is mutable, I can change it, right? Uh, they're both still pointing to the same thing, which is now changed, which is now uh, has another element of seven. That's why both of them appear to be changed.